David Devine, um, we're here down in Chippingfield as part of our Harley 70 Why They Came Here uh, project. Um, why is Chippingfield significant? Okay. Well, the Chippingfield area is famous because it was the first housing area to be built under the new town scheme. It was uh, the new town uh, was designated by the government in 19, 1947, March 1947, 1946 New Town Act, and the first houses were built um, just round the corner in the old old road for houses, mainly for the housing management. But Chippingfield was built by W.C. French, a local firm, and it was mainly to house the build, builders. The builders of the houses literally did build their own homes. And uh, there is um, a plan, um, a layout plan, of the Chippingfield area. It's dated about 1950. And it actually has all the plots marked on it. It's also got the not only the numbers of the houses, but it's also got names. There's quite a few names written on there, and those again are the builders. And the builders moved in with their families, um, and because these these guys had got a very important job to build the new town. Can you just take us back uh, for, for timeline purposes, David? So when was the New Towns Act? When was the first bricks laid? And when did the first people actually move in? If you can answer all three for me. Okay, well, uh, New Towns Act was 1946. The first bricks were laid in 1949. So the first housing areas like this, this one here was was built between 1950 and 1951. Um, however, in the middle of that, before 1947, when the town was designated, and before the first bricks were, were uh, built, there was two key things that happened. One was the public consultation on the new uh, town. The people had to come here and explain to the local people, the parish council and so on, what a new town was going to be like, what was going to be needed and what the benefits of it were going to be. Then, after that, a master plan had to be drawn up to lay out the plan and explain it to people. That master plan was drawn up, again, there was a Harlow Development Corporation founded uh, in 1947. Uh, in order to say get the whole thing up and running the special powers and the corporation commissioned a well-known architect Frederick Gibbard to draw up that master plan and the first master plan was drawn up in 1948 again that went out to public consultation there were public meetings in parish halls and so on and, and just to interrupt for a second here about yes. these meetings um, were these meetings uh, civil occasions, or were there any sort of harumphing and not and, and or nimbyism, etc.? Um, there was a certain amount of nimbyism. Um, the area for the new town was to be built by and large to the west of Harlow, the old town, which is the original town. Um, in 1947. Um, we had the area that is now the old town as the town of Harlow and to the south the hamlet of the small village of Potter Street. The bulk of the new town was to be developed to the west and people in the old town were concerned about having all these hundreds if not thousands of houses built with all these people coming into 
inter interfere or interrupt their, their lives. However, unlike Stevenage, where there was a sustained campaign against the new town for some several months, in Harlow's case it was only a matter of about four to five months, if that. And that was mainly because of another key factor in the picture, and that was the role of the Labour government and the Labour Party in the local area. Because um, there was a campaign against the new town coming that was formed mainly by the land owners um, who were saying we don't we don't want it, we don't need it, it's gonna interrupt us, you know, our hunting and all the rest of it. And the Labour Party campaigned very strong strongly they counted every claim that the other side made and said why should you live in a tight cottage with inadequate facilities you will get in the new town you will get a house of your own you'll be able to rent it it will be, it will, will be modern it will have all the modern facilities inside toilets bathroom and everything else and eventually what happened was after several months the campaign was won in favour of the new the new town in fact the irony is that it was almost like overnight the shop owners in the old town suddenly realized oh hundreds if not thousands of people are going to be coming here because this was designated as a town for 60,000 people it was more like, like Pound signs, ka-ching, all those extra customers. Let's have it, bring it on. So economics and politics um, swayed the day. What about the landowners? There must um, have been landowners, like the Arkwrights, etc. I mean, yeah. How did they get their permission? And was there anybody who actually said, no, you're not building on my land, or was it a compulsory purchase? What, what was that mechanism there? Again, that was a combination. There was a lot, a, a lot of the land in the new town area was owned by private landlords. Uh, you mentioned the Arkwrights. Um, they were the Arkwright family at that time. There's only one member of the family left who was living in Pardon Hall. Uh, but they did have the Mark Hall com company which actually owned a lot of the land. And it was a process of negoti negotiation and in some cases there were instances of compulsory purchase and the combination effect of that. But it must have, from what you've researched, it must have been quite a, a sad time as well. Wasn't there a feeling that this is a, you know, the end of, end of the countryside, the end of, a, end of a way of life? I know the beginning passed a new one, but would it have been more like a, seen as an end of a way of life? Uh, it would have been seen as an end of an era, certainly. Um, a whole new world coming along pretty quickly. Um, you have to remember in Harlow's case, unlike other new towns, um, it was very much um, the new town was going to be built on, um, as it were, green land. There was very little settlements, very few settlements. Um, you wouldn't call them villages, you would call them hamlets in each of the other parishes in Latin and Nets, Nets one and so on. So we're not talking about an awful lot of people. The landowners would have been the ones that would have been affected the most, certainly. Um, is there an actual birthday? And it, was there a day that actually, you know, any, and was there any sort of a signing day or a, or a photo op as, as we often have now these days? Was that day exist at all in 1947? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I mean there were, as I said, there were the public meetings that were held to I think, I think what discuss I meant was, the plan, was, was not was, an actual birthday officially. What about 25th of March 1947? Why is that a significant date? Well that is, no sorry, that date, yeah that, that date, that date is the, um, is the actual date of designation 
of the area as a new town and that was because of the 1946 New Town Act that was passed in Parliament and that set in train the plans for the building of six new towns around the London area, uh, first post-war new towns. Um, Stevenage was the first one in November 1946. Um, then there was um, Crawley and Hemel and then Carlow was in 23rd of March 1946. Just stop for a sec, I need you to go back a bit. You're you're just I'm you're forward. going for a little walk and uh, you're not alone. Okay. Um, um how quickly did the population grow? You know, did it go from naught to sixty thousand within a within a year or two or was that a, a slow process? Yeah, the um the original designation in the master plan was for sixty thousand people to be living here. There was a revised plan in 1952 to take it up to 85. And that is the one that was actually, when you talk about the master plan, that, the 1952 was the one that they used. The, one that they to. the population increased quite quick, quickly, mainly in, in the 50s late 50s was a kind of mid to late 50s was a kind of peak period growth up to about 1962 and it was in that period that the town became known as pram town uh, because we had the fastest pop population in britain and one of the iconic images of harlow is the, the plans outside Smith's and um, Sainsbury's in Broadwalk. Um, they're two or three rows deep. And, all, and, and again, if you look at the archive photographs of the housing areas, you don't see many cars parked on the road, but you do see lots of prams outside the houses. And when did the last building finish? If you know what I mean. That is to say, I was aware. I mean, places like Catherine's and Summers, yeah. they they weren't built in the 40s and 50s. Were they? No. They was building in the 70s, wasn't it? Was that the final part of the jigsaw, so yes. to speak? Yes. Yes. The um, most of the town was built fairly in a rapid period, um, and by the mid 1970s. The, the bulk of the town had been built and they were able to then pass over the assets of the town from the corporation to the council, Hollow Council. Hollow Council came along in 1957 and the assets were, were being passed over. All, all the housing stock, the shops, the factories and the other. And the last housing in the town was the Sumners and Catherine's neighbourhoods and so by 1980 the town was effectively finished, had been completed and the dis, dis, dissolution date was the end of March, I'm not talking about, end of, end of April, sorry, 1980. The Development Corporation was wound up and their job was, was uh, 